All right, folks, from everyone coming in from the waiting room, just give us another uh, minute or two. We got a couple late submissions, so we're just waiting for those folks to submit. We'll kick off in the next minute or two here. Appreciate your patience. Just waiting on one more project submission, guys. Thank you for your patience. We'll kick off shortly here. Hey folks, appreciate your patience. We kicked off in another minute. We're just trying to get one final project submitted. Kicked off in just a minute. Yeah, um, yeah, so I think it just went through. I just want, like, give me like three minutes. Okay. All right, folks, just another two or three minutes. We promise we kicked off soon, just waiting for a final project to get submitted.
Appreciate everyone's patience. We kicked off here in another minute or two, just waiting on the, the final go ahead on this last project and make sure that everyone has their project submitted. While we're waiting, I just went ahead and made all of the judges co-hosts. So when we get to your slide to say a few words on who you are, you'll be able to unmute yourself just as a heads up while we're waiting. Give us another minute. I'm just waiting on the go ahead from Jennifer and then we'll get kicked off. All right, we're going to go ahead and get kicked off here, folks. Thanks, everyone, for your patience while we're getting just a couple other submissions um, over to us here. So um, welcome to the project ceremony for Hack Up State 15. Um, we hope everyone uh, was able to get some sleep last night, hopefully, if you were hacking away on your projects. Um, and uh, yeah, we really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us here today. Um, Hack Up State 15 is proudly presented um, by the Tech Garden, the Center State CEO. Um, we really, really appreciate all their support and, and really helping to us enable us to make this virtual event happen. Uh, my name is Jesse. I'm one of the partners at Hack Up State, and uh, we'll dive right into the closing ceremony here. Um, so just a heads up, we are live streaming this Zoom meeting onto YouTube, and we'll be recording it so you can check out uh, these submissions after the call as well. Uh, we'd encourage you all to make your Zoom meeting full screen so you can see everyone on the call and you'll have all the controls and all that good stuff. Um, and yeah. All right, just a couple Zoom logistics from yesterday as a, as a quick recap. Um, so we're using our Zoom, uh, this link you're on right now for the demos and then the winner announcements. It'll be the same URL. Um, everyone is muted by default and uh, they do not have the ability to unmute except for the organizers and the judges. Um, the Zoom chat will also be disabled um, just to have a couple mechanisms in place for security. Uh, but we would encourage everyone to turn on their video so that you can all see one another. Um, and please make sure that your first and uh, your real first and last name appear on the screen. And if you're interested, we are also live on YouTube at that link right there if you'd like to share it with anyone. Um, given how you've been muted, uh, we'd appreciate it if everyone would show their support and their reactions using uh, Zoom reactions. So applause. Uh, celebration, all that good stuff when we have the project pitches. Um, the only time I will note to raise your hand in Zoom is after all of the project uh, submissions are gone through that were recorded. Um, so just as an FYI, here's how you raise your hand. Your UI might be a little different, but this will help us identify you if for whatever reason you missed your project uh, presentation or your project submission in depth post. Um, all right, so got to say another huge, huge thank you to all of our sponsors that allowed us to uh, put this virtual event on uh, for free and also all of our events uh, twice a year for free for all the participants. So um, again, we're, we're incredibly fortunate to be joined by so many amazing sponsors. 
Um, and you know, we we fully recognize that many companies are in really tough positions uh, during COVID-19, and we're eternally grateful for all the support that allowed us to put on our first virtual hackathon. Um, so Tech Garden Center State CEO again um, presenting sponsors of Hack Up State 15. Uh, when we were able to have our in-person events, they always provided the venue space generously, um, as well as our as well as our classroom space for careers in code. Um, so our events really would not be possible over the past several years without the Tech Garden and the Center State's CEO support. Um, Syracuse Ed School, another longtime supporter since our inception of Hack Up State. Um, we'd encourage you all to check out their undergraduate and uh, graduate programs if you're interested. And they also have a, a handful of job opportunities as well. Um, Density, another returning sponsor of Hack Up State. Um, Density makes uh, people counting sensors and software right in the Tech Garden. Um, and they're helping businesses uh, safely reopen in the wake of, of COVID-19. Um, Tompkins Trust Company, another sponsor we're thrilled to have on board, supporting all kinds of different uh, local tech initiatives here in Central New York. Um, TCG Player, another returning sponsor of our event. Um, they've headlined our events in the past and, and we really um, attribute a lot of our growth and success due to TCG Player support as well. Um, at t another returning sponsor, Fortune to work with Ben Roberts over the past uh, several years here. Healthy Connections, um, a new sponsor of Hack Up State. They offer services for healthcare care professionals. Um, and access to critical information uh, to help them receive better care. Uh, Booz Allen Hamilton, another new sponsor of Hack Up State consulting firm, uh, uh, specialized in analytics, engineering, and cybersecurity. Um, appreciate, Chris, all your help over the past uh, 24 hours here, uh, helping out folks in Discord and in Slack. It's very much appreciated. Uh, Assured Information Security, AAS, another returning sponsor of Hack Up State, headquartered on Rome. Um, they also have an office in Syracuse and Rochester. Um, if you're ever looking for a gig, try their uh, code challenge at canyouhackit.com. Uh, Lemoyne College, again, another sponsor we're thrilled to have back on board. Uh, we're very excited about a partnership with them uh, as part of Area 21 that uh, we're excited to tell you more about in just a minute. Um, Onondaga County, um, thrilled to have their support as well um, over the past few years, and they're really what enabled us to um, organize and execute our first quarter of Cruising Code as well. Um, very much uh, appreciate their, their partnership. Um, National Security Innovation Network, NSIN. Um, they're a problem solving network um, to help those support the defense of national security. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, definitely check them out. Um, and of course, Upset Interactive partners, Doug, Zoe, Ksenia. Um, and if you're interested in anything, software development, software engineering, blockchain development, definitely check them out. And, and last but not least, Lattice Law Firm. So if you wanna make your own uh, business out of uh, Hack Up State, definitely talk to Mark. Um, so again, huge, huge thank you to all of our sponsors that allowed us to put on this event uh, for free uh, two times a year. And without our sponsors, uh, our events simply would not be possible. And I really appreciate all their support, especially during COVID-19 and, and allowing us to put on our first virtual hackathon. So please show your uh, support in Zoom uh, with all the reactions. So thank you so much to all of our sponsors. We really, really, really appreciate it. Um, also got to give a huge thank you to all of our speakers and our panelists and side events that we had on Saturday. Uh, we had a lot and, and huge thank you to Dana and Jennifer as well for helping to facilitate all of these sessions. So uh, Linda Kovacs, Mike, Josh, Tom, Christy, Amanda, Ashley, Ryan, Jason, and Elena, Mark, Karen, Mike, Melissa, Josh, Dallas, and Matt. A uh, huge, huge thank you guys all yesterday for taking the time yesterday uh, to talk with our hackers. We had some really, really awesome talks. Um, and as an FYI, these are all on our YouTube channel now. So if you miss them, uh, definitely go to our YouTube channel and check them out if you like. We had some really awesome talks. So let's give a, a nice Zoom uh, round of applause to all of our speakers and panelists for taking the time uh, to talk to everyone yesterday. Thank you all so much. Um, also a huge thank you to all of our mentors and our volunteers that helped to join us. Um, we had our, our Slack and Discord channels both very active uh, even throughout the early hours of, of the morning. So uh, thank you all uh, mentors and volunteers. Give them a nice uh, Zoom applaud for all of their hard work and uh, for really anyone that helps someone. So thank you so much to your, the mentors and volunteers to helping all of our hackers. Um, also got to give another huge thank you to our team uh, for all their hard work. Um, of course, Doug, founding partner, Dan and Jennifer, who we both brought on to our team to help this and, and have really um, driven uh, Hack Up State 15 in this new virtual event. Um, and they were both instrumental in really the success of the uh, events over the past um, you know, uh, 24 hours here. So thank you to Dan and Jennifer. Let's give them a, a nice Zoom round of applause, please. Thank you so much, guys, for all your hard work. 
Um, all right, just quickly, our mission, um, so Hack Upstate, our mission is to advance our uh, tech communities um, in Central and Upstate New York. So over the past several years, we've built a, a pretty sizable network of folks, which we're really excited about. Um, and there's two really big things that we, we get so excited about at uh, having these events. Uh, one is we have all this awesome tech talent all across Central and Upstate New York, whether that be here in Syracuse, uh, Rochester, Albany, Buffalo, um, et cetera. And Hack Up State really allows us to get all those different technologists together from different regions of Central and Upstate New York. Um, it's pretty awesome to get folks together, even if it's virtually, um, to collaborate on different projects together. Um, and secondly, is we've been uh, able to help align a couple dozen job opportunities across Central and Upstate New York. So over the past few years, we've uh, helped to play a role in that, and, and we're really excited whenever we're able to um, help land folks with uh, promising employment opportunities. Um, code of Conduct, uh, we said this on Saturday as well, um, but please review this if you haven't had an opportunity, and definitely let, let us know any thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns you might have. Um, in short, be cool, have empathy, do the right thing, uh, treat everyone with respect and kindness, be thoughtful in how you communicate, um, and don't do anything destructive or inflammatory. And if you ever at all um, face any issues, um, send us an email or uh, message myself, Dana or Jennifer, and we will uh, do whatever we can to, to make it right, especially in this new virtual setting. Um, Heck Up State is not a business competition. So we're really all about celebrating technology. Um, we care about what you build, what you broke. Um, you know, tell us about the technologies you leveraged, um, the APIs you use, all that good stuff, and the problems you solve. Uh, don't tell us how you're going to make a million dollars off your project. Um, tell us uh, why the technology you worked with was, was so awesome. Um, quick rundown for the rules again here. Um, everyone adheres to the code of conduct I just mentioned. You can't uh, write any new code um, on existing projects. Uh, libraries and frameworks, of course, are allowed. Um, and please be respectful of the virtual space we have in all of our channels, whether it be Zoom, Slack, or Discord. Um, and sponsors as an FYI, if anyone works on a prize, um, a project rather, uh, you're not eligible for the prizes, but your team members are. You can certainly still demo as well. Um, all right, quickly for judging criteria, 20% um, for creativity is a solving a new and interesting problem. 20% for the wow factor, how interesting and impressive the project is. 20% um, for execution, what, how much you're able to actually accomplish over the, the uh, span of 24 hours and does your project really work. Um, demo, everyone submitted to us recorded videos will show which, you'll, uh, which will demonstrate the challenges you solve, the technologies you use, all that good stuff. Um, and the last 20% is for the multidisciplinary project. So branching out to different areas of study and combining uh, many different disciplines. Um, all right, we are very fortunate to have an awesome panel of judges join for our first virtual event. So I'd like to give all of our judges an opportunity to introduce themselves and, and say a few words on, on who they are and the work they do. Um, so judges, you are all co-hosts and you should have the ability to unmute yourselves in Zoom. Um, so we'll start with uh, Liza, if you'd like to say a couple words. Hi, everyone. Um, Liza here. First of all, this is like the coolest thing I've ever attended. Um, this is my first time at, at a hackathon. Um, and my role, as you see on here, I'm the Syracuse Surge uh, Workforce Manager. So essentially, I bridge the gap between amazing partners like Hack Up State and employers and employment opportunities. And if there is a gap, we call Hack Up State and we're like, hey, we need a training that's specific to the 20 openings that are available. Can you guys do it? Um, so again, if, if you're a coder, if you're looking for a job and you're connected to Hack Up State, uh, please feel free to connect with me as well. Um, and again, I'm just so excited to be here and I cannot wait for everyone to present. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Lila. Let's give a nice round of applause and uh, Zoom for, for Liza here. Um, all right, next up, Steve, if you want to say a, a couple words. Hey, guys, Steve with Density. Uh, we're a 65-person venture-backed IoT company with offices in the Tech Garden. Um, really pumped to be a part of this. Looking forward to the presentations. Uh, and then just quick plug, uh, we just closed a pretty significant fundraising round, and we'll be uh, opening a lot of positions now through the end of the year. And if you're looking to join a uh, I'm biased, but a cool tech company in Syracuse hit me up. Awesome. Thanks so much, Steve. Let's give a nice uh, Zoom round of applause for, for Steve. Um, all right, next up, uh, Jeff, if you want to say a couple words? Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff Duxburg. I'm the director of Genius New York. We're a startup accelerator run out of the tech garden. Uh, 
And uh, normally uh, we, we'd be seeing you all in person, but for right now, I'm really excited to be here on Zoom. Uh, Genius New York is a startup accelerator funded by Empire State Development. Uh, we invest $3 million in tech per year, uh, primarily in UAS to help grow and create jobs here. And I'm always uh, keeping an eye out for the next big thing. And I like to end my Zoom statements with over so people know I'm done speaking, over. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I'm, I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, and next, but uh, certainly not least, uh, Kristen, if you want to say a couple words. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Kristen Mannion. I'm the president and founder of the Albina Group, a tech consultancy based here in Syracuse. We are predominantly focused on uh, helping small, medium-sized businesses improve their use of technology and really make it worth their while. And I also do a lot of work uh, with public data and uh, looking for insights and new applications for our different sets of public data. So I'm especially excited to be here today and uh, to be learning all the cool things that you guys did. Over. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kristen. Uh, let's give a round of applause for, for Kristen and all the judges um, who took some time out of their Sunday during all this craziness to, to help join us. So thank you guys so much all for, for being here. Um, all right, so next up here, just a rundown of the prizes. Had uh, quite a lot of prizes this time around. Um, starting at the top left there for the grand prize for the best overall hack, thousand bucks. For the first run up, five hundred dollars. The CNY Social Impact Prize for the best technical solution that tackles an immediate or pressing problem um, in Central Upstate New York, um, tackling a social economic challenge. Uh, that's, that'd be a hundred dollars. Feedback prize, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but you'll get a twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card uh, in the running if you complete that. Um, if you uh, submit your best, uh, a, a sorry, a virtual Zoom background, you'll be in the running for a $25 Amazon gift card as well. Um, and as well, we'll be announcing the CMI trivia winner um, from yesterday uh, during our award ceremony. Um, then transitioning to the right-hand side here, uh, the hack that is the best Ascension Upstate New York, our great place to work from home hack will be $100, uh, probably provided by the Tech Garden. Uh, best use of open data, be $100, probably provided by Syracuse High School. And then $100 for the best effort hack that maybe got like 80, 90% of the way, but didn't quite get over the finish line. That'd be $100 uh, provided by the Tompkins Trust Company. And finally, best hardware hack. Um, again, like I said yesterday, unfortunately, we don't have any hardware uh, at the Tech Garden like we traditionally do for our hardware lab. Uh, but if you manage to hack on something awesome involving hardware, you'll be in the running for 100 bucks, probably provided by Density. Um, also, just as a reminder, uh, if you pursue if you pursued those um, themed prize categories, you're still in the running for uh, grand prize and the first runner up. Um, also, just as a quick reminder to the judges, I'll say this again uh, when we're starting demos, but please join us when all of the project presentations are done on that other Zoom bridge on your calendar. You should have it for 1:45. Uh, we're hoping to be on there one by 145, but that time might differ later. So I'll remind you again, but just as a reminder now, um, join us separately for that deliberation on the, the Zoom bridge on your calendar. Um, swag. Uh, so we are shipping shirts and stickers and all that good stuff for this event. Um, in order to qualify to get uh, swag, uh, a couple things you have to have either pitched the project yesterday, submitted a project today, or um, have been a mentor and volunteer to get a shirt. Um, sponsors and judges, you'll still be sent swag. So if you'd like some swag, uh, you can hit up that to bit.ly link or scan that QR code on your phone. Um, one quick note that I, I did forget to mention yesterday, we will only be shipping to New York State um, as of right now, um, just as a heads up. And you'll have your swag. Um, it'll likely take about a month to receive uh, your shirts and stickers and all that good stuff. Um, and we really appreciate everyone's patience uh, while we um, go through and, and uh, send you your swag. So um, thank you everyone uh, for your patience while we send out swag. Um, project submissions, uh, you can view them all right now on this dev post link. Uh, we sent a bunch of information uh, over the past 24 hours for submitting and all that good stuff. So you have hopefully submitted by now um, and as project submissions are closed, but for folks that wanna take a look, if you go to this link, there's a little project gallery um, and I think we have about 25 projects, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll, we'll see them all in a minute, um, but you should have submitted by now. If for whatever reason you um, are scrambling and haven't submitted, I believe that we have turned late submissions on. Uh, so if you can get your YouTube video uploaded in the next you know, 10, 20 minutes, uh, <laughs> you can try. Uh, but yeah, the, this should be all set by now, hopefully for everyone. 
Um, you can find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Thanks to everyone over the past 24 hours that have uh, retweeted and tweeted at us. We really appreciate it. Uh, we love to see your virtual spaces today. Um, if you can uh, tweet at us, um, use this hashtag. We'd love to see your little work environments, uh, especially if you're working on any hardware and whatnot. Uh, we'd love to see uh, your virtual workspaces. That'd be super cool. Um, also, just a quick plug for Careers in Code, um, our free coding bootcamp for women and minorities to help provide them with the technical skills that they need to um, ultimately land internships and jobs after uh, 24 weeks of education uh, with local employers. Um, so our first cohort, uh, we were fortunate to partner with Onondaga County, um, and we're in the very early stages of organizing our next cohort in partnership with uh, Lemoyne College's Erie 21 initiative and Center State CO that we're really, really excited about. Um, so we're officially moving forward with that. Um, and if you're interested in applying as a student, um, check out our website, careersincode.org, click on the big waitlist button. Um, and if you're interested, um, instructors, TAs, guest speakers, are always looking for folks that want to help um, get involved and support the program. So um, hit us up, uh, team at hackupstate.com or, or Slack or Discord, um, and you can learn more at careersincode.org. Um, jobs and internships. So if you're looking for a job, definitely uh, check out our jobs channels on Slack and our jobs page on our website. Uh, we also, for, for hackers, we sum, uh, created a little bit.ly link that we should have submitted yesterday. But you can see your submit your resume to us and on the sign up form if you check that box um, if you're okay with us sharing that information with uh, employers that are potentially hiring uh, we will send this to them after the event so drop your resume there and we'll share it with our sponsors after the event um all right so on uh, circling back on that feedback survey for a 25 dollar amazon gift card you'll be in the running for um, if you complete this survey um, just a couple quick questions it'll just help us tremendously getting some feedback and then we'll, we'll randomly select one person to receive that Amazon gift card. So bit.ly-hu-xv-survey. So if you go there or scan that QR code, you'll be brought to that survey. Um, and I'll give everyone a quick 30 seconds to get this. Um, it's a free 25 bucks. So if you submit this, you're in the running for it. So, uh, and that goes for everyone too. So uh, everyone can, can fill that out um, except for sponsors. So I'll give everyone another uh, 10 seconds to grab that. And then we'll move on here. Going once, going twice. Hopefully, everyone got that. And actually, Dan and Jennifer, if you guys can drop this link in the Zoom chat as well so that folks can access it. Um, okay, awesome. So, quick note for all the winners uh, after we get back from deliberation uh, please stay on that Zoom call. We'll need you to fill out a Google form in order to get your um, payment preferences. Right now, uh, we're just using Venmo or ACH. Um, those are the only two options. If those don't work for you, we can try to figure out something, but those right now are the two that we will primarily be using. Um, and of course, money will be split amongst everyone, uh, depending on how many members are on your team. Um, and as another reminder, sponsors aren't eligible for prizes, but all your team members are, if we had any sponsors participating. Um, after the event, if you write a, a little blog post and uh, reflecting on your virtual experience here, uh, we'd love to promote that and share it. And that's just super helpful for us to kind of see how we did. Um, and hopefully in the spring, we'll be back in person, but we'll see. Uh, if not, we'll have another virtual event. Um, and for everyone that submitted projects, um, this is really, really important for the virtual event. Uh, please make sure all your team members are added on Devpo. So if you haven't done that, please take a quick moment to check that you're signed up and they're added. Uh, this is especially critical for our virtual event. If you want to help organize a hack update or get involved with uh, the operations for Cruise and Code, uh, shoot us an email or hit us up in Slack. We, we'd love to uh, love to chat. Um, okay, so demos. So we had everyone submit pre-recorded demos to us. I'm just going to go through and play them. Um, again, as a reminder, uh, if you haven't submitted, we'll allocate a little bit of time at the end for you to present, um, but you'll have to wave, raise your hand in Zoom if you would like to present. Um, so I will announce that after you go through all the projects, uh, but please remember if you haven't submitted for whatever reason, uh, raise your hand at Zoom and then we will uh, give you a little bit of time. Um, given how there are so many project submissions, there, there are a lot. We unfortunately will be not having Q&A with the judges or the audience, um, but if you do have questions, we'd encourage you to ask them in the Slack or the Discord um, if, you, if you have any for uh, particular teams, but just for the sake of time, because we have so many. Um, we're going to have no Q&A. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the project. So we actually have them all queued up in this deck here. Um, and if you'd like to take a look and view kind of the full submission for all the projects, um, it should be in order top to bottom from um, everyone I'm going through. If you go to that dev post link 
and then you uh, click on the project gallery tab at the top, you'll be able to see the GitHub URLs if people submitted it um, in, in a description of uh, the project. So uh, take a look if you're interested. I think that Jennifer just sent it in the Zoom as well. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so take a look, guys, if you're interested in uh, seeing more here. Um, but with that, guys, let's uh, see those demos. So they're all in the deck here. So I'm just going to go through and uh, play them all. Um, Dana and Jennifer, you guys can let me know if you can hear this, hopefully. I'm going to go on mute. I can. Can everyone hear this? In large cities like New York or Sydney, I can hear it. It's often difficult to find the parking space quickly and at an affordable price. Imagine that you want to go out for a shopping, uh, grocery shopping, and have to pay twenty to thirty dollars just for parking your car. To address this issue, I have created a web app called Easy Park to connect ve vehicle owners with people who own private parking spaces, either in their home, houses, or apartments. I will give you a quick tour of the web app I have made. I have already logged in through my Google account. And uh, once I do that, I will be uh, redirected to the home page where I can see the different parking spaces in and around the area. So once I zoom out, I'll be able to clearly see what parking spaces are available. So once I choose a particular space, I will be um, shown the related info, for example, uh, John's parking space at what uh, location, then available from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and the rate. Uh, then I can book a time slot, for example, 9 a.m. Uh, to maybe 11 a.m. So once I um, enter the time, I can see the total amount. So I can compare for different, for different parking spaces uh, and based on my liking and my choice i can choose to check out so once i check out i'll be redirected to a payment gateway where i can pay uh, through my credit card once i'm done with uh, booking a parking place i can also actually host my own parking space so i can do that by going in my profile area i have already um, booked a, a parking space under my name. So that is in the Jefferson building in Syracuse. So uh, for this parking space, which I hosted, I have some incoming requests for a particular time slot from these many people. And uh, I can also view a schedule of all the um, people who have booked an appointment or uh, booked a uh, parking space um, at these uh, various timings. Uh, so we can see that at 11 a.m. and at 3 p.m. Uh, the spaces are available for which I have re uh, received some requests. So based on that, I can uh, choose to um, approve a particular request. Since I approved Shaila's request, so her name will actually uh, appear in the 11 a.m. slot. Um, and in, the, uh, in this way, I'll be also able to track uh, my total earnings for the day. Uh, so yeah, um, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you to Easy Park for submitting. Um, hang on, let me, how do I get out of this? One second. Still on the virtual thing, guys. In last cities uh, like New York. Or All right. Thank you to Easy Park. Next up, we have Chat Bloom. Prejudice, stereotypes, and discrimination would impact diversity and make our society weaker. One of the ways to tackle discrimination is to talk freely and openly on the issues. Yet, it is hard to implement as people are generally afraid or reluctant to talk about discrimination. We would like to build a platform that encourages respectful and productive dialogues by allowing people to share their experience and fears. Let me walk you through the app. First, users will sign up with their email, username, and password. After logging in, they will input their personal details, which is hidden from other users. On the home page, users can browse recommended videos and spotlight articles to educate themselves on the issues. They will be also assigned to a group with a weekly focus, and they can watch the introductory video and also read the guidelines on how to build constructive conversations before joining the group chat. 
Users can also check notifications and reflect on the experience and write a diary. They can change the account details and preferences in the settings. Here is a quick demo of our working prototype. We have developed the home page with recommended videos and spotlight articles. However, we face some challenges on getting the YouTube API to work. We have also completed the feature of in-app chat and it is fully functional. All right, thank you to Chatbloom for submitting. Um, there's gotta be a better way for me to do this. All right, up next we have Mental Health Discord Bot. Hello and welcome to the Mental Health Bot Discord project. Discord is a messaging platform similar to Slack. And what makes it special is that it, it allows server owners to add bots. And bots give group chats, or servers as they're called, uh, added functionality. So what our project is we programmed a Discord bot that promotes uh, mental health. So me and my friends here are going to run through the features. And one of the reasons this is so important is because, especially now that everything is going online in, these, uh, in this age of COVID-19, uh, schools, clubs, organizations, even, even like friends, everyone uses, or at least a lot of people use Discord to communicate. So our first feature is message screen screening. So any messages related to suicide are caught and um, they are referred to a mental health uh, suicide prevention hotline. So these keywords, not only for this feature, but for all of our other features, they aren't case sensitive either. So that's a good thing to point out. And so we also have a few general features that we've included, which includes the dot ping button, which is generally just to make sure that this bot is working all right and there aren't any latency issues. And then we also have added the dot help uh, command, which will show all the different categories of hotlines that we have added into the bot. So abortion, coronavirus, dating, eating, uh, yeah. And then just put the command, the command prefix, which is a period before the name of the hotline, and then you will get it to pop up. So while um, a lot of people in the United States have pride and take pride in our civil liberties that many other countries do not um, have or, or are able to appreciate, um, we, we do offer a sort of censorship in here because of certain contexts that uh, social situations may not deem appropriate. Um, so uh, words that are meaning demeaning or insulting others will be censored and uh, appropriately worn by the Discord bot. And then our last um, feature that we've added is the encouragement feature, which is if you type the word dot encouragement, it will show you an encouraging affirmation, such as you're wonderful, or there are also a bunch more that you can test out. Uh. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and uh, have a good day. All right. Thank you to Mental Health Discord. Hello and welcome to the Mental Health. Up next, we have COVID-19 Info Plus. Hello. Uh, we are going to talk about a little app. COVID-19 Info Plus. During this hard period of time, we believe that people should be fully aware of the challenges and current states of the society, as well as the updates of the COVID-19. However, there's so much uh, misinformation on social media that makes people scared. So we hope by using our application of COVID-19 Info Plus, the public could feel no fear on the future and help each other. So bearing that in mind, we put 
four main sections into our app. They are news, search, funds, and profile. The news page brings all the newest updates of COVID-19 and policies fetched from various official news sources. Every piece of the news has its own title, a preview picture, the writer, and the publish time. After clicking the news, the user will be taken to the original page of the news to see all the details. We use Echo AR to implement an AR application and visualize the number of positive cases in different states. Currently, we embedded a QR code in the app, and by scanning, people could see the AR visualization. But in the future, we hope to embed it as part of our app. Under the search page, users could search different keywords from external database. In the future, we may build our own database to support the query. And we collect all the verified official charities and organizations who accept donations under the funds page. Users could click the squares and the app will lead them to the original page to help out. It provides the public a viable approach to help each other. And under the user profile page, after the user sign up and sign in, the app will show them the articles they saved and the, the donations they were interested in. Because of the short time period of hackathon, we couldn't do everything that we want to do but we do bear some ideas in mind that we could hope to accomplish in the future. And here is the video of our app. All right, thank you to COVID-19 Info Plus. Up next we have, oh yeah, I, I forgot to mention this. For all the, the projects, please uh, show your uh, Zoom support using the reactions. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, all right, up next we have uh, Sefti. Worried about your essentials being contaminated with coronavirus? Well, no more. That is why we created Safety, an intelligent UVC-based sanitization machine with a variety of modes to sanitize each and everything starting from your daily groceries to your electronic devices. Safety doesn't operate without a password which ensures access to only authorized personnel. Choose the required mode and the system automatically sets the time on the display. Once the door is locked, process begins. After completion of process, the door unlocks and the item is safe to use. All right, thank you, Septi. Let's give a nice Zoom round of applause for Team Septi. Thank you for submitting. All right, X, X, ugh. next up we have XR size. 
AR size. Obesity afflicts over 13 million children, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The risk of childhood obesity also increases with age, with over 20% of all children 12 to 19 year olds being classified as obese. Furthermore, study after study has found that childhood obesity dramatically increases the risks of dangerous health consequences in adulthood. COVID-19, and the lockdowns imposed to combat it, have made this complex and far-reaching problem even worse. Schools all around the world have closed, which means no recess, no sports, and no gym class. Many communities have implemented strict social distancing guidelines which have closed outdoor spaces like playgrounds and parks. Unfortunately, these measures have accidentally encouraged kids to spend even more time just sitting around indoors. In fact, University of Missouri sociology professor Joseph Workman estimates that just six months of school closure could result in a 4.86% increase in childhood obesity. I built the XR Size app to help solve this problem by giving kids and adults a creative way to have fun exercising in their own homes. Welcome to exercise section, here you can explore different exercises with the help of our technology. All right, thank you to XAR Size. Let's give them a nice round of applause in Zoom. All right, up next we have New York State Attractions. It's Alexander Jansen, and this is my demonstration for my um, showing why central and upstate New York are great places to work from home. Uh, I used information from uh, data and where I grabbed information from the National Register of Historical Places and I'll put a balance the link to it and the agricultural fairs in New York CSV. I used pandas, pymongo, and bison to ingest data. Um, here I load the CSVs into Panda data frame, Pandas data frames. I parse the location information, strip out any unnecessary bits of strings, and cast the uh, latitudes and longitudes to floats so that they are in a form that I can use in um, DB. I connect to the database, drop the existing collections if there were any, create an index for location um, that will correlate with the column that I create, and then I um, cast the data frames to dictionaries and insert many, the entire data frame all at once. And here you can see that I provide a lat long location, limit uh, the results to five, and you can get results based off where you might be or a position or a location that you may want to query against. The next part uh, I spent quite a bit of time working on and did not finish, but I did manage to write a basic Flutter app that would load the 
Google Maps API uh, using my own uh, Hackup State API key and using a bit of Firebase on a back end. Um, currently, all the app can really do is return back to your location, but the flat button here is supposed to drop pins where like is in the center of where you're looking and I would have I was hoping to use that location to query my Mongo database in the same fashion that I did in these two queries here um, and then return results either by dropping pins around where you dropped this pin or have a menu come off to the side just listing off the locations um, that was a bit out of the scope uh, of what I wanted to do, partially because I'm fairly new to Flutter and I was really just learning how to do all the stuff with the Google Maps uh, API. Um, I would actually be interested in working on this beyond the hackathon just so I can say I've written the Flutter app of you know, some non-triviality. Um, uh, that's about it for my presentation. Uh, All right, thank you for your time. Uh, Alex with New York State Attractions. Let's give a big round of applause for Alex in the Zoom chat. Um, all right, next up we have Fun with the Care. Um, this is a Vimeo link, so just give me one sec, guys, to pull this one up. with the care for your presentation. Let's get fun with the care. Nice big zoom round of applause. All right, up next we have Fund It. Fund It is an online, easy to use platform that democratizes access to capital for small businesses via crowdfunding. Small businesses originated in the days of slavery before 1865. Civil rights permitted businessmen to operate inside American legal rights structure starting in the Reconstruction era and after. Unfortunately, after 2020 pandemic and lockdowns, many small business founders 
have been hit severely and startup founders don't have those connections or profits to get funding, many big investors are scared to invest in small businesses. That's where Funded allows regular people like you and me to support these businesses and help them grow. Any small investor can start by logging in. After logging in, there are some important features that differentiate Funded from other crowdfunding platforms. We have a section which shows the recommendation for the businesses for investing based on user search history. This section shows the business what users have liked and have saved as potential investments. Let's first look into Wink. After clicking on it, user can see their pitch video, then how many days are left until their crowdfunding of the business should reach their goal, where it's located. If we scroll down, we can see how much they have raised so far and their goal. The minimum investment for the business is $10. This amount can be customized for each business. We have kept the platform as simple as possible. Therefore, every information that they might need is displayed directly in front of them. Then there is business highlights or news and an about section. After reading everything about the business, an investor can either invest in it or contact the founder. This is the main part of the app. Therefore, we have implemented it using Square API. Square API enables us to build this feature ensuring that the information of the users is secure and encrypted without having to do it ourselves. Here, a user can either enter their debit card information and the amount with this slider. They can also make a deposit, see business insights, etc. all directly. And the last and most unique feature of this platform is highlighted business of the month. As cash income fell in the small communities, because of very high unemployment and small businesses closed down. So in this section, we give an opportunity for groups like student founders, women founders, people of color to rise and shine. If they are facing discrimination from the outside world, we can show them the online community is much stronger. And there are people who still support them and treat them as equal. Seeing Hack Up State taking initiatives like gift card matching to help local businesses we felt how we can help local businesses through tech. So we built this app. At the end, I would like to show you a quick video of Elon Musk, his advice to the government. It's, it's do, do whatever you can to foster the growth of, of young small companies because you know, young, young small companies, it's, 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 like a, it's like a little tadpole. It's very fragile, it's, odds of success are very low. So anything that can be done to allow it to grow a little bit um, and to um, sustain itself in the face of much larger companies is extremely important. All right, huge thank you to Fundit. Thank you for submitting. Let's give a big round of Zoom round of applause for Fundit. All right, up next we have uh, Controlion. Oops, sorry. Hi, this is the web app that we have come up with for this hackathon challenge called Controlion. It is basically a web app that helps the user control his or her smart appliances using just one single interface. When we first visit the landing page, it clearly indicates the purpose of this app which, where there are smart home devices floating around which is uh, created using parallax javascript library. Emphasizing how the simple web app can be the interface for all the possible smart home appliances, even the non-convention ones. As it is visible that we are here now in the alive mode of this web app. This uh, very web app can be converted into a very mi minimalistic mode by clicking on the minimalistic mode option. As visible here, the explore option leads to the many available rooms from where the user can uh, control all the devices required, which is created using CSS grid. And animations. Once again, coming back to the alive mode, on clicking the explore option, we can view which rooms we can visit and uh, view the actual options which can be switched on or off, and further appliances which can be added. For example, As visible this is the main bedroom and here we have options like room lights air conditioner extra outlet that we can either uh, off or on using this button going back to home 
we also have a login feature to keep track of only authorized users to access their home. Some features in this app are not yet implemented but can be a part of the future scope of this app. As visible here is the login feature. For our app we have used HTML, CSS and JavaScript with some of its libraries to name a few are parallax and animate for the client side rendering. Which were also part of the challenges we faced because we used it for the first time and it was very interesting to work on. So I hope this brief overview was interesting and thank you for allowing us to display our project to you guys. All right, thank you to Controlion for your, your submission. Let's give a big round of applause to Controlion. Um, okay, up next we have CoHelpVid. Hello, I'm Muskan Gupta from India. I have made a website for COVID-19. It's basically called CoHelpVid. So my basic motivation was as the cases are rapidly increasing, people are either taking it very easily or panicking. So to solve this, I made this website. The basic impact will be the whole mob as we are all suffering from the COVID-19. And the unique factor, factor of my website is it doesn't only create awareness, but also provide a solution so that people do not panic. And uh, for the frameworks, I use, use these languages for the website. So this is my entire code. And I uh, used live option to present the website. So here is my website. So this is the home page. So you can sign up here. And this sign up is basically for regular newsletters, which would be sent to the person who logs in, then you have, we have stats. So for stats, we, as I'm in India, I chose just, yeah, I chose India and I got a graph of how the uh, cases are rapidly increasing or how the people are recovering. And I can change the place accordingly, like USA. So the cases, are depicted till 30th September. Then I have news and hacks. These are basically to generate awareness. The cases, news, and hacks uh, category. Uh, hacks will provide a solution like how they can create mask at home so they don't have to spend much and other general things. And then one more thing that I have included in this website is a helpline. This helpline will basically help people who have symptoms and do not know whom to contact. So they can send us the details and we'll help them to coordinate with the people who can take care of it. So yeah, this is my website and uh, this is my code. So this is my home page and everything. Every code. Cool. And that's it. So, thank you. All right. Thank you to Co Help Vid. Give a nice round of applause and Zoom. All right. Up next, we have uh, Steve with Dirt Direct Interactive Real Tabletop. Hi, my name is Steven Schaefer, and I created DIRT, the Direct Interactive Real Tabletop. So instead of sharing your uh, screen with somebody else, I want to actually share your physical space with someone else. So that's what I'm attempting to do here. Um, so what are all the pieces you need for that? So in this case, person one would need an external camera, um, an additional projector, a place to be able to see what's being projected. Um, person two would have the ability to see what's on the camera of person one. Um, they'd also be able to interact with that video. Um, and the hope would they'd also be able to see each other during the process. 
Uh, unfortunately, I did not get to the ability to see each other during this process, uh, but we do have the other components to do. My tech stack, uh, I worked with Node.js, uh, with Express and Socket.io, and the hardware, a couple of computers, uh, camera, projector, and some libraries. So let's take a look at the demo. So here we have the external camera, along with an external uh, video projector connected to a computer that's on the Dirt server. And here is an interactive desktop space. If we go over to the second computer, you can see the interactive space and the user is able to draw on the space. And if we come back to the interactive space, we can see the drawing being produced on the space. So that was DIRT. Um, I learned that working with projectors and cameras, multiple cameras is uh, tough and aligning things up are extremely tough and fickle and um, it was a, a lot of fun. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you much so much, Steve. That was Steve with DIRT, Direct Interactive Real Tabletop. Um, all right, up next we have Health Heroes. Hello everyone. The name of our project is Health Heroes, which is an Android application that aims to minimize and if not eliminate the physical aspect of paperwork by storing and tracking files. In the age of social distancing, it makes complete sense to switch to a digital medium given that it is secure enough. Here is the workflow chart of our app. We are using Google's Firebase service to store and process our data, which ensures top-notch reliability and security. We also have devised a mechanism that uses QR code scanning technology for quick authentication and referrals. As I had already mentioned, we are using Google's cloud platform, which is an absolute boon considering its reliability. Okay, so here are a few screenshots of our app. We have the dashboard, the login page, the sign up page and the QR scanning UI. Our app will create unique IDs for each patient which will store some basic information about them and thus preventing them from filling out the same documents every time they visit the hospital. The QR code scanning functionality will allow for speedy authentication and all files and prescriptions will be stored in the cloud to ensure nothing ever gets lost. Speaking of doctors, they too will have their own unique IDs but in this case they will have to verify themselves first Every prescribed document will be tracked and stored in the cloud, minimizing the use of physical paperwork and thus reducing the chance of virus transmission. Here is a video of the app in action. Speaking of privacy, our app uses Google's Firebase service to store and process data, which uses the 256-bit advanced encryption standard algorithm for securing data. In short, it is completely fair to say that your data is in safe hand. So with that being said, I have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much to Health Heroes. Let's give them a nice big Zoom round of applause. All right, up next we have a 1099 generator, uh, which was removed. Jennifer, any chance we have a updated link, Jennifer or Dana? Otherwise I'll move on to the next one. Uh, let me just take a look. That is with Max. Let me just take a look on the... Yeah, if someone can send me the, the link in the next 30 seconds, otherwise we'll circle back um, on this after have it you got it perfect can you uh send it over to me in zoom or slack or discord yep i send it over to you thank you thank you all right up now is 1099 generator brought to you by max this year max fulfilled the ultimate american dream paying someone else to do his work come next january he'll have to report to the irs 
So he goes online to download a 1099 and is greeted by a big red attention, alerting him that he has to order the form in the mail because the IRS digital copy isn't scannable? Questioning what 10 pages of instructions across two booklets and a carbon copy form itself bound by some strange holes on the side. As a true millennial, he Googles to learn that it is for a dot matrix printer, which haven't been used in two decades. Putting his foot down as a mighty developer, he storms away to the only IRS system that accepts electronic returns, FIRE, filing information returns electronically. Dismayed but not surprised, he finds a website straight out of the early 2000s, thinking he'd find a web form to fill out. Instead, he finds that the returns must be transmitted as a structured file. Finally excited to get his hands on some JSON, XML, or heaven forbid a CSV, he finds something much, much worse. Something he hasn't seen in, well, ever. ASCII formatted text? Ready to throw in the towel, instead, he finds a 162-page PDF documenting the spec of said ASCII file where one space could throw the entire import off. And here, my friends, is where the result of such a heralding journey comes to such a divine ending. For after all the trials and tribulations, Max made a front-end only React app that transmits no personal financial data to a backend. It allows an end user to input the information into a three-step web form, then generate out a perilous ASCII text file with 500 characters on a single line that is officially accepted by the IRS FIRE system. And, as such heroic hackathon tales often end, it will all be open sourced and released for free. The end. Uh, Jesse, I think you're muted. I am muted. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, let's give a nice uh, big round of applause for Max for his 1099 generator. All right. Um, up next, we have Mask Appeal. Hello, everyone. This is Manak, and our project is named Mask Appeal, which is an end to end face mask detection system. So we took a two-headed approach to the problem and created two separate packages. One is a computer script for large-scale deployment and the other is a mobile app for a more portable deployment. So the first approach uses computer vision to detect and determines whether the people in the video frame are wearing a mask or not within a fraction of a second. So here is a live demo of me testing out the model and notice how the label changes when I remove the mask. Okay, so this script is super versatile and could be deployed in both CCTVs and webcams as long as we have RGB video input. And speaking of deployment, uh, here are a few places where our system could be used at like airports, ATM machines, etc. So the other approach uses an mobile app and it accomplishes the same thing but the obvious advantage of the system is that it's highly portable so here's my brother testing out the app and as you might have noticed already that the label in the bottom part of the screen changes depending on whether or not he's wearing the mask or not so as i had mentioned before this app could reach places where cctvs can't so like like in the cases of commercial cabs and temporary quarantine centers so moving on, okay, so speaking of privacy, uh, both of our systems are completely offline and none of the frames are stored or uploaded. So it's completely safe from a privacy perspective. So with that, uh, I have come to the end of our presentation and thank you for watching. All right, huge thank you to Max Appeal for uh, submitting their project. Let's give them a nice big round of applause. All right, up next we have web to live I also think we're about halfway through projects as an FYI folks. Hi, my name is Danvis and this is my web page visualization tool. Um, this tool is primarily for people who might be interested in getting into web development or maybe you've already started, but they have some problems. 
uh, styling their own projects. And essentially what this allows users to do is they're able to enter in specific attributes into the page and they'll be able to see those changes happen live. So this would be a great tool to um, show people who might be interested in learning HTML and um, things of that nature. And the project is pretty much entirely powered by uh, Django and um, of course a bit of HTML. So the way it works is that uh, users can enter in a few different attributes and some texts. So I'll just say hello world. Um, and any kind of style is possible, like six pixel um, dotted uh, coral, like that. It's a nice color. And so we hit the OK key and we see all of our styling after we um, hit the button a few times. It's just because it's a good bit of data in the server I'm running it on uh, that you might have to hit it a few times. But yes, uh, clearly you can enter in any combination of these elements. Um, I'll just enter in five pixel ridge purple. I like this one a lot. Right, here we go. And yes, the, the changes really come through right then and there. And you don't actually have to enter in every single element. You can type a word in, hit OK, and it'll be added to the list. Or you can change the, one of the stylings by itself, uh, like, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. like if you want this one. It'll be changed. There we go. And yes, this is what uh, users can use the tool for. So um, I've also included a button that links to the HTML of the page and shows a bit of the scripting for, in terms of um, HTML and some of the Django variables so that when they're done using the tool, they can look at this and see how it was done and even get a peek into some backend web development. So yes, that is my project. All right, huge thank you to dev to live for submitting their projects. Give them a nice big Zoom round of applause. Um, all right, next up we have, is the mail here yet by Edward. Hi, Hack Update. I'm Edward Deaver. I created the is the mail here yet project Born on necessity to see when a FedEx package or UPS package is being shipped. I received a we miss you um, note on Saturday morning. So here's the tech stack. It's all running on, it's a Python script that is taking in um, a webcam via OpenCV, passing the TensorFlow. If it is a UPS or FedEx truck, sends me an email via Gmail. So here's what I built and we'll get into this a little more on the demo. Uh, and the model is made using uh, Google's Teachable machine. And I just uh, batch downloaded uh, Bing image results for that. Technical challenges. I'm running CUDA 11. TensorFlow only supports CUDA 10. I originally was using a Wise Cam using an RTSP stream, but I kept getting so many dropped frames that I was crashing my program. So I moved on to using my own webcam. Uh, and this is my first time using TensorFlow or OpenCV. Uh, steep learning curve, but a uh, really rewarding payoff. Okay, we are back, and my webcam is now being controlled via the app. So now I will point the webcam at my screen, which has an image of a FedEx truck, and then we will move on to a UPS truck. As you can see, this is the uh, email for the application. There's nothing there, but there will be as soon as... 
do that. And now it is sleeping. And there we go. Our um, FedEx truck is here. We're going to test it out on a UPS truck. UPS and UPS truck has been sent in the email and see that it was sent at 1027 a.m. All right, and that's my project. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and this has been a great virtual hack up. Zit. Awesome, thank you so much, Edward, uh, for the kind words. Let's give it up for Edward for Is the Mail Here Yet? All right, next up we have uh, Cooking with Clouds. It's Mike DiMaria, and my project is called Cooking with Clouds. Recently, a bunch of uh, people in the Salesforce tech community started to post pictures on Twitter of food uh, and recipes and things we've made. Um, and it was kind of a way to bring a little bit of positivity to our Twitter feeds uh, in some fashion, you know, given everything. And so we noticed that, you know, a lot of people wanted to know how to make this stuff. And we said, well, what if we crowdsourced various recipes, a couple of hundred of these, compile them, put them into a cookbook and use that cookbook for hunger relief and uh, food and security programs. And so we said, okay. We could do that, but how are we going to manage all these recipes? And especially ones coming from the internet, you know, where, where who knows what people submit on forms. We need some approval process. We need a tracking system. And so that's what I built today. So the first thing I did was create a simple form for inputting a recipe. This is just a straight, simple HTML form uh, running on a, uh, a Linux server, you know, running Apache. And so our users would, you know, would submit their, their entry. They'd come up with their recipe and submit it. And now the data is being put directly into Salesforce. So inside Salesforce, I get a notification. I see my submission here. If I wanted to, I could also get, uh, have tasks be created or get an email. So I could get an email alert, let them, you know, hey, a new recipe has come in that I could have uh, configured to, to go eh, after a few days if I want instead, instead of doing it immediately. And so let's say I review this and I say, all right, this is an okay submission. You know, I've looked at this. I want to put this into the cookbook. So I create a little button here called make recipe. And what this is doing is this is moving this from effectively one database table to another database table leads to actual recipes. So here it is. This is all done using something called flow. So it's a, uh, a visualized way of uh, moving data around, which is quite nice. This entire project does not require writing a single line of code, uh, which is kind of really cool. So it's very easy for me to give, hand this off to uh, some of my fellow users. Uh, so my fellow uh, co uh, collaborators, so they could do stuff and modify the system without having to make any other changes. And from here, we could just set up approval processes. We could create tasks for people to review um, and, and indicate when this went to a, a, a cookbook. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mike, for cooking with clouds. Let's give it up for Mike in the Zoom chat. All right. Up next, we have... Uh, Algris. So the what this machine does, it can figure out which stocks to buy. Because that is one very hard thing to do, to figure out cheap stocks to buy and to know if they'll go up or not. Because a stock can either go up very much or it can go down and you'll lose money. That's the downside to trading stocks. But we made a machine that has a very high accuracy of figuring out which stocks to buy, when to buy them, how to buy them, and if they're good buy, and the estimated amount of profit. Now, I'm is used for me too, just to make this easier to understand myself. That's what the inspection profiles are. 
has the idea profile, a data profile. These are test data sets. These, this is my key profile. This is where I store all my data. Well, actually, this is where I interface it with my broker. So you might be wondering, what is a broker? Well, if you trade stocks, you already know what a broker is, and I won't have to tell you. But for those of you who don't know what a broker is, a broker is an interface for you to trade stocks from. The broker I'm using is a broker called Alpaca API. These are API keys for me to interface my code with the API so I can trade from Python. Trade model H5 is going to probably lag out my computer, but this is where it stores off the entire algorithm it makes into this file in binary format. Well, alphanumerical binary format. So that no one can read it, obviously. And then Python. This is all the Python code. Collectdata.py. I run this every millisecond in order to collect new data. Because I need to have constant new data. Let's say that there's a price that goes off by point one every two seconds. I need to know that. Because what happens if I buy the stock when it goes really high already and I don't know about it? Plus, I need the data to update every constant second. That's what this file does. New dataset.csc is just a, a test data, data set for you to train with. High keys is, a, is just if there's no data set inside this CSV file, there's no keys inside the CSV file for, or no web store keys, then I'm going to ask myself to enter some keys in. Stock.py is basically just a whole bunch of parameters for me to set, such as the API, any stock set for my own stocks, it automatically does that. The time frame and all of this. These are just parameters in stock.py. Time frame.py. Some more parameters. Well, this is just the configuration for the stock parameters. Train dot I'm gonna go for in this demo because it's uh, this off. is what I use for the train the model. I use What happened during that time? As you can see, in that time, made six thousand dollars, lost eight thousand. Well, actually, made six thousand dollars, lost five thousand, plus another two thousand, but it made thirty thousand. So this account at twelve thirty only had one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. As you can see, well, actually, I started this yesterday, and I see, well, actually, I started this yesterday. You know, I just provide my thirty five thousand dollars. So I started this account yesterday, gave it exactly a hundred thousand dollars. I made thirty five thousand dollars yesterday. Today I lost that basically lost a little bit, just a tiny bit. So but you basically you can see within two days I made thirty five thousand dollars. I believe this this can actually change the future of stock trading forever. This made thirty five thousand dollars. All right, thank you to Algris. Let's give Algris a big Zoom round of applause for, for submitting. Thanks, Algris. All right, up next we have Crowded. Okay, hi, I'm Alex, and uh, I built this and calling it Crowded. Um, the idea is that um, you basically have a series of creative challenges and these sort of game formats that people can submit via text or audio or images or voice stuff. Um, there are these sort of structured prompts after you've completed them or the time limit is up, you can review and vote and comment on them, share them in other networks. You can find stuff on the topics that you're particularly interested about. Um, as a user, you can also submit and upvote um, new challenge prompts so you can decide what's coming next. And then ideally, I'm eventually gonna curate the best of it into a variety show. So yeah, I'm a serial product developer. I just do this stuff all the time. I probably built 20 or 30 different web apps. Also have a long background as a game designer. And I'm an activist, which is why I'm building content um, about justice. So as far as the tech stack goes, yep, a Ruby on Rails um, backend, API layer, uh, second code base. I got a um, front end U, uh, written with Vue.js, and then I'm also using Next.js, um, so I can have a dynamic s site that's search engine friendly. And then I use the Cloudinary for image and video processing. Um, and I'll give you a demo in a second, but there's a user authentication built out the general structure with uh, different kinds of categories. Each category is different formats and each one formats different challenges and the challenges can all have different styles and rules to them. Um, so the users can submit different kinds of media. 
and then once the content has been submitted, you, they can like or dislike it, flag things, bookmark stuff, um, and it'll dark mode toggle. Yeah, I, I learned, I made good progress here, and I planned it all out, and I stuck to things I knew how to do, and I almost screwed up in the beginning just trying to get the basics of the, the Ruby and the Rails installation going because I wasn't paying enough attention. So yeah, pay attention. And then I did um, use a cloud binary for the first time with this. So let's go to the demo. Um, here you can see uh, some of the active challenges. You go over here and you can see the different kinds of categories. So there's prose or poetry, graphical images, illustrations. Um, you go to an illustration. So in this particular kind of challenge, you're doing a cartoon, doing some sort of illustration. Here are some different topics. In this case, we'll pick the Supreme Court. And then um, I'm going to log in first, actually, because otherwise I won't let me do anything. So let's go back to the Supreme Court, submit an image. I would upload my cartoon that I illustrated. And so when I submit it, I can like or I can't do anything because I already reacted to that. Um, I can bookmark it and see it over here in my bookmarks. And I can also go and do something in a video format. So if I want to upload some spoken word I, about white privilege, I can submit a video. Um, you know, just open that one up. This is again Cloudinary doing it. And then I submit that, oh, get the same video. So it goes, a little share, which actually was the last thing I was doing, so it doesn't work. And yeah, then you can go, s that's about it. We got a little navigation system up here. Click view transitions, log back out, homepage, all done. Hope you enjoyed. All right, big thank you to Crowded for submitting. Let's give a nice big Zoom round of applause for Crowded. Um, all right. Up next, we have a uh, discard test of the system. Uh, is this Jennifer? Is this the correct? Yes, that's the correct one. OK. I believe so. It is 30 minutes long. Uh, do we have a up to date submission for this? Take a quick look, Jennifer. Yep, I'll take a quick look All right, Jennifer, right now. For that, Jennifer, I'm going to move on to the next okay, slide. Cool. All right, up now we have Elite. Second year. The team is going to have a Eleven people number. Eleven people number. Only So ten, Nanga, twenty other. Raul, 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 no. See if you can move this too. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, there are ten people here. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. 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 Yeah, if you uh, just like uh, mute that one, I think that um, I think that that should be good. Okay. Do you want to? Sure. I'll I'll mute it and keep playing it.
All right, thank you to Elite for submitting us. Give a nice big Zoom round of applause here. Um, all right, next up we have New York State COVID-19 Parent Portal. White, and this is my partner. I am Jesse Ellis. And uh, we created a COVID-19 parent portal along with some help from Ignacio. He had to leave for work, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, uh, in current moment in time with the pandemic going on, it's very hard to kind of keep track of everything you need to take care of because there's a lot more that you need to kind of worry about given what's happening. Uh, and especially with people who have children and that are in school and need the resources to keep up in their education. And so that's kind of what we wanted to tackle. And we wanted to provide people with easy to digest information as to what was going on in their county in terms of how the coronavirus could be expected to affect their children in the school, as well as resources that they can use if they feel the need to intervene and aid their child in their education. Uh, the tech that we used, I will go over while I'm talking about the website itself, while I'm on the website. Um, but yeah, I'll get more into that while we go along. So here's the website itself. It's the COVID-19 parent portal, as I said. So we have a Tableau uh, heat map of the state on a county level. Uh, they're broken down by susceptibility, which we calculated to be a mixture of uh, the funding available to schools on a county level, as well as the coronavirus infection rate in those counties. Uh, so like if we were to say, go to, say we lived in Syracuse, so we'd go to Onondaga County. And after we select that, we already entered in resources, but it's kind of a community-based approach where everyone who uses the site can enter in resources for their neighbors to use and whatever. So everyone can kind of band together to try to make sure that their children get what they need. Uh, so we can kind of walk through that real quick. So let's say we want to submit a resource. So let's say we want to submit a tutoring resource and the description can be tutors. And this will be, I'll use one of the random autofill ones that I already have just to show you how it works. And so then we can hit submit and it's been submitted. So the next time that we go to check on Onondaga Now that resource is there. I can't remember. It's this one. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Uh, but yeah, we wrote, we wrote the front end using React to interact with Tableau database. And that then renders the uh, resources depending on where you clicked on the map. Uh, the back end uses a Google Firebase database. And we analyze the data using Python and beautiful soup to scrape from the web. And yeah, we used open data along with other sources. So thanks. Yeah, thank you all very much. Awesome. Mm -hmm. thank Just thank about. you to New York State COVID-19 uh, parent portal. Um, it's going to be a nice big Zoom round of applause. Uh, we just got a couple other projects to get through, folks. So we'll probably start judge deliberation more around 150, just as a heads up. Um, all right, up next we have Raycord. Hi everyone, my name is Gavin Isgar and today I'll be showing you Raycord, which is an application I developed that tracks and analyzes Discord server data seamlessly to help grow your community. Now before I start, I just want to say that a lot of stuff is broken and a lot of stuff broke prior to me recording, but it's okay because I plan to continue development after the uh, hackathon ends. So start off, um, our tech stack, uh, we use Plotly for graphing, that's currently broken but it's, it's being fixed. Uh, we use a GraphQL API over in an Express server to um, grab server information and um, print it out to the um, application. We use Discord JS for the um, bot end of it, which the bot is um, used to track the server information and send it to the application. Um, we use Electron JS for the graphical user interface. And uh, let me uh, show you guys what it looks like. We have a bunch of source files here. takes a second to load up. Um, obviously, like I said, a lot of stuff's currently broken. Um, Plotly was working and was showing up here with the text to um, explain everything, but for some reason it um, decided to break. But how we uh, navigate through the program is you click on this little sidebar here, brings up a 
the sidebar, you have server dashboard, which is right here. That's what's supposed to show the Plotly graphs. Um, toolbox, which is coming soon. That is actually for server moderators and developers on Discord, where they'll be able to add certain tools to help moderate, but also track information to the program. Um, preferences, which is obviously to set um, application preferences for whoever's viewing it. And the about, which is just explaining the application and also the development of the application. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching this quick demonstration. I know there's really not much to see, but there was a lot of work still put into it. There's a lot of stuff still being fixed, but I appreciate taking time to, um, yeah, watch it. Thank you guys, and hope you um, have a good hackathon. Awesome. Thanks so much, Gavin. That was Gavin with Raycord. Let's give him a nice big Zoom round of applause in the in the chat. Um, next up, we have Duel, and uh, the videos are a little off, so I'll just paste this one right into YouTube. Um, up now we have Duel. Hello there. My name is Tanya Sanzo, and I am the co-creator of Duel. Duel is a 2v2 PvP arena. I'll show you a quick demonstration of the game. So you have three different characters. You have the warrior, you have the wizard, and you also have the ranger. So pretty much my end of the job was to work on the game engine and the programming. And Wyatt did most of the art. He did the animation and the pixel art. And I also did the tile map that is the background of the game. Um, there is a playable.exe file on my GitHub and feel free to have fun with it. It's just a casual PVP game that you can play with your friends. It records score based on if you kill someone, so right now the warrior score is one, or the warrior score is zero right now. Now the warrior score is one, so it records your score. It's just a good time you could have with your friends. Um, thank you very much, and yeah, have fun. Bye. Hello, my name is Wyatt, and I did most of the like, character animation for Duel, and so I used a uh... A sprite, which I picked up on Steam, and uh, there's only three characters, but uh, this was my first time doing pixel art and character animation, so I had a fun time doing it, and we can go through just one of the characters real quick. Here's the idle animation. Here's him walking, which is kind of silly, but here's the uh, attack, and then here's the uh, death animation. And that's all. All right, huge thank you to Duel for submitting. Uh, let's give him a nice big Zoom round of applause in the chat. Um, all right, next up we have uh, Quipid. Hello, Jesse. Um, I sent you a another link. They just shortened their video. It's the same uh, demo though. Okay, is the one I have right now? This is uh, three minutes fifty eight seconds. Is that the right one? Uh, yes, three minutes and three seconds, you said? Three minutes and 58 seconds. Is this the right one? Let me send you this one. I used the one that you sent me. Just give us 15 seconds, folks. Jennifer, while you get that, I'm going to move on to the next one, and then we'll do okay. a bit. Yeah, I'll uh, get that. All right. All right. Um, so this one, perhaps, Jennifer, Jennifer, this two minute, 40. When you open the app, you'll be. Uh, like, just confirm with them, um, and I'll send you it. OK, I'm going to move on to the next one, then. Um, OK, up next, we have uh, Threshold. Hello. Uh, my name is Ryan, and uh, I worked on a project this weekend called Threshold, um, which is a way to effectively walk through the city of someone else's mind. If you're working on a project, um, you're working with someone else, it can be really hard to contextually get an idea of where their understanding on something is coming from. 
And so I built a tool to help you visualize um, someone else's internal mental model um, and try and make sense of that. So I used a couple of different data sets to do this. Um, one is GitHub. And the second one is pocket data, because I thought um, browsing data might be a useful place to start, as well as GitHub issue commit history. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And this is effectively, let's see when we get the explosion. This is a knowledge graph of basically all my tagging history um in um in pocket which is a bookmarking service which a lot of people use because it comes default with the firefox browser um and in this simple visualization which i built with uh d3.js you can kind of zoom around you can see which nodes are connected so tags being um you know programming languages um reference materials and then these green nodes are actually links um, and I can see what topics relate, in, at least in my mind, to other topics. So what books, uh, what lists I might want to look at, what nodes are relevant if you wanted to have sort of your someone's understanding of a given topic. Um, similarly, I applied the same visualization um, to GitHub data. So I took a, a, a project that I've been working on separately at work and um, I decided to visualize the GitHub data um, and who's committing to it, who's contributors. So I'll just go up here. And you can see how um, basically all the issues that are in this, um, all the uh, nodes represent common GitHub actions like um, pull requests, labels that you might use. If you pull on someone, you can kind of see um, what they're most related to. Um, there's still a bit of work to do on the physics, but the idea here is that we're creating a system that can be scaled against multiple data sources uh, to create ontologies, um, those being basically the vocabulary of each data source, um, to allow you to get an understanding of the complexity and also the, the mental model that people use when approaching uh, a given part of their work life or their home life. Um, so you can kind of step into someone else's digital shoes. Yeah, so that's about that. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan, for Threshold. Uh, let's give a nice big Zoom round of applause uh, to Ryan with Threshold. Um, and I'm going to circle back with uh, Cupid's presentation. Um, and then I think we just have Hello, more Hello, my name is Rohama Sahli. Uh, our app is called Cupid, and it is a modern dating guide designed to help you take your relationship to the next level. Listed, we have our contributors, along with a screen grab of the UI for our profile setup. Okay, um, my name is Aaron. I worked on the, uh, I helped work with the UI UX prototyping for the app, uh, as well as a little bit of the front end. So I'm just gonna kind of review uh, our front end stack. So for the front end, we use Flutter and Dart um, on the like the code specific side of things. Um, and we used Sketch, uh, Sketch for the, uh, the prototyping. Um, and we also utilized Font Awesome and the Banky UI mobile kit uh, for a little inspiration when it comes to the design. Um, the back end, uh, we used Flutter. Uh, Flutter is perfect because we can do both uh, right in the same uh, like framework. Um, so, so yeah, that's our that was our tech stack. Um, next slide, please. Um, so basically, with this app, the idea here is is that we have when you open the app, you'll be presented with a splash screen uh, that will go away after probably a few seconds. Um, you'll then move into uh, just an introduction screen, a welcome screen, welcome to Cupid, modern dating guide designed to help you take your relationship to the next level. Uh, we can go through to, um, you know, beginning to capture some of the personal details that we'll need to basically um, profile the individual and uh, set them into a phase of the relationship that they're in or looking for. So uh, we'll get started. We'll just need some personal information, a first name, a last name, uh, age. Uh, you know, gender, 
um, dating experience. This would be like years or months. Um, you know, it, it can be um, a few different things, basically a string that's passed there. So once we finish that, we're uh, presented with this reward that we, we completed our profile setup and we're launched into the dashboard here. And in the dashboard, we have some options. We could go back into the profile and uh, edit it. We, we do not have access to the progress yet. We could look at our credit screen, um, but really the crux of this is to, to push uh, the user into going through the questionnaire, uh, which is going to profile them further. So we're going to start the questionnaire. We have a bunch of questions. Uh, what sort of relationships are you seeking? A casual or serious next? Do you know their mother, mother's name? Uh, have you seen their child at home? So it gets further and further until you're kind of in more serious things. Are you married? So um, we go to next. Now, after we have the full profile, we're able to stick you stick the individual or um, you know designate uh, a certain phase of the relationship for the individual. Now we are just defaulting to the initiating stage, which is the first one here. And now that we're here, we can actually look, um, go into this phase and uh, start um, you know, performing some of the tasks that are needed. So we're going to, uh, you know, read through this. The user will read through this and then have a series of steps that they have to take. And they can, we have recommendations. If you click this, it'll drop down and show a bunch of recommendations. So we're going to create a small talk. This will be just this one task for this. After we have finished that, we are now in a challenge for this. Uh, so we cannot um, go further and progress until we complete this challenge. So we, uh, we are going to click completed, which will unlock a new um, phase. And we are now in experimenting. Um, <clears throat> so we have, uh, we can go into that details. And now we have a few more tasks. This represents that there's three tasks here. Obviously the recommendations are there. You can go here and uh, you have a challenge for this one and then you're completed. I just want to show that we also have this credits section. All right, Hughes, thank you to Quip it. Let's give it a nice, uh... Big uh, thank you to Quipit for presenting. Um, all right, I think we just have one final submission and then we'll start judging, let me just make sure. Yep, um, all right, let me just grab this and then uh, we will start our judge deliberation. Hi, my name is Matthew and today I'm very excited to present our project, Notaholic, the heartbeat of your notebook. We're very fortunate to have a very diverse team um, and we wanted to really tackle an idea. And to do that, we came up with a marketing survey for, uh, t with 22 people. And these were our results. Um, here, people really like to take notes in many formats. People like to see other people's questions when they're taking notes because that's a very informative channel to improve your own note taking. And having an audio text to save your notes is really, really helpful. So to address this, we came up with a website, a web framework, which I will just demo right now. I could sign in as a lecturer or a student. And here we set up everything with um, Flask as our backend. And we also set up a whole user system where I can just um, sign in with my Google account. So here, this is our main page. We did not finish the actual app, but you could see um, this is the user right now. And um, our idea, um, which I will just share um, what is actually the idea, is to have a place where everyone can, uh, this is the live transcription right here. Um, you can, at any point of the lecture, students can ask questions or present a key takeaway. When they present a key takeaway, uh, your timestamps will be recorded right there, and you can also give feedback to the lecture at any point by sending a smiley face or a sad face. And by the end of the lecture, um, everything will be pre-processed, and the professor can see a summary that the professor can share to the whole class. And um, there will be statistics as well about that. Some features we plan to add was, so if I click start recording here, we used Google speech to text API and we got it to work. Um, but unfortunately we didn't get it uh, running in our front end. So, so 
And uh, there are other things we got running, such as our, our whole database, which I used uh, object relational model to work. And um, we have it all set up. Um, it's, it's just um, not enough to show in our, in our demo today, unfortunately. Um, other features we wanted to add is a BERT smart summarizer, which we have already applied. Um, but it took too long to put in our website. Uh, um, and um, as a result, we did not include it. But given more time, this is definitely something we think could be very powerful in the future. Thank you so much for tuning into our demo today. All right, huge thank you to Loom for uh, their presentation. Let's give it up to uh, Loom. Um, uh, or sorry, Notaholic, I'm so sorry. Notaholic, I'm sorry. Uh, let's give it up to Notaholic for the presentation. Um, all right, guys, so given how we're already at two, if you didn't submit, sorry, uh, you can still post in dev post and post in Discord if you didn't get an opportunity, but uh, we're gonna skip this part. Um, so huge thank you to everyone who submitted. Uh, judges, please join us um, with the calendar invite you have with the separate uh, Zoom link, and I will meet you on there. Uh, we will be back in about 10, 15 minutes or so, and uh, I'll turn it over to Jennifer and Dana, who will facilitate a session on how they got in the tech. So uh, we will be back shortly, and thank you for joining us. Just give us 10, 15 minutes. Hi guys, this is Jennifer and Dana. How are you guys all doing? Give a virtual clap for everyone who uh, presented today. Today, um, we're today uh, right now as the judges are deliberating. Uh, I actually want to open it up. I think it's kind of same thirty people that have been on this call, and we just want to kind of share you know our story about you know how we got into tech, and also I know that Mike Demaria and also Glenn Allen wanted to share their story as well. So I think that uh, it would be really appropriate to kind of just hear from us on you know, how we ended up in tech, how we ended up even hosting this hackathon. So I wanted to maybe even, Dana, why don't you start? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking, I had no aspirations to be a coder programmer. This profession literally sucked me in. So it, it was very interesting. As a teenager in high school, I was actually a part of a female rap group that actually made a record. And by the way, it is that rec the, the, um, the song is actually on YouTube. If anybody wants the link, let me know, I'll send it to you. But um, so, I wanted to be, after my little rap career was done, I decided that I wanted to go into hairstyling and I wanted to be like a personal stylist. I saw my people like really just offering this service for people. Um, and so my mother was like, no way. You're not going to be a hairdresser. It's going to mess up your body, all the fumes and things like that. Um, you know, you're not going to be a stylist. You need to stick with math, science, computers. So the, she, I, I fought with her and my guidance counselor with that for about a while. But, you know, being 15, it wasn't much of a fight. They won. Um, so, you know, having that as the, the, the background going into it, going into college, I started out in social services, didn't like it when I realized that I was going to make absolutely no money in that field. And that's when I decided that I was going to start taking coding and programming classes. And so um, the, towards the end of my um, last year, um, uh, I was working at Syracuse University and um, someone had abandoned uh, um, an assistive tech position that they, they were supposed to start that week the, the department was right down the hall from us and the the, uh, the director of that department was like look I know you're in school this person was like literally literally supposed to start within a few days I have absolutely no one for this position she said I know that you know you're studying tech if you come here and fill this position for me interim until I can find someone permanently, it'll double your salary, blah, blah, blah. I was like, great, let me at it. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do, but if you're gonna have these people come in and train me, and if you're gonna tell me what to do, um, I'll try it, right? 
And it was like the best thing. She brought in um, vendors from Kodak to teach me scanning. And she brought in assistive tech people um, who she, she had folks come in from everywhere. Vendors show me how to use products to help people with visual disabilities, uh, cognitive delays, um, uh, uh, physical impairments, um, mental health issues, you know, these are the products that you can use so people can focus, so that they can read, so that they can write, so that they can see this is what you do to make a document accessible and keep the college from getting sued because if people, <laughs> so because if we don't do X, Y, and Z, it represents discrimination. And then there was this group on campus called Beyond Compliance and they were ready to sue every day. So she was, basically like keep excuse me keep my behind from getting sued and and that and, and basically that's what I did it was that was when I learned about the term baptism by fire I'd never heard about that before but I was baptized <laughs> and let me tell you we rocked and we, we rolled and um and a, a lot of sleepless nights a lot of weekends sometimes in the weekend in the office with my kids with their pillows and blankets, just cranking workout. Um, I gained experience as a supervisor. At one time, I was supervising up to 20 people to actually produce accessible text. I was doing braille, um, accessible math stuff. Um, we were doing um, captioning in the classrooms, remote captioning. So uh, about five years later, after doing this successfully, thank you, Diana Darris, who was my, my mentor and, and my first boss. Um, so a few years later, um, uh, Onondaga Community College was facing the same issue, but they said, well, you know, we don't want to get sued either, but we want you, we see what you can do, but you're going to have to build this from the ground up because we have nothing, but we'll pay you more money. And I left Syracuse University, went there, did that, built it from the ground up, made partnerships between disability services and the dis disability services and other departments. There was IT career services. I was installing stuff. I was training staff and students and creating these modules. And then I had to go into the testing department. I had to show them how to make testing accessible. And then when blind individuals found out that I was a certified technology instructor for people who are blind, then we got an increase in people um, who had visual impairments uh, start coming to the school. And, and that was really exciting. And also started a side gig, side gig with New York State Commission for the Blind, where I would actually go into the homes of people um, who were blind or visually impaired and show them how to use specialized programs to read and write and even navigate within their homes. So. Um, that's how I got started. Woosa. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for your story. I think, can you please share that link, the, your rap career link? <laughs> it's so, so it's, it's not about the career. It is the actual song that I rapped on. And someone came to me one day because they, you know, know about my past and my history. And I, I actually don't even perform unless the family makes me at family cookouts. But I will share that I was like 15 or 16 years old. So I was really tickled to find out that uh, the, the, uh, the LP or album, if you will, uh, is actually on YouTube. So that makes it legit because sometimes people don't believe me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, it's totally there on YouTube. Here it is. So I'll share the link. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for your story. And You're next, welcome. <laughs> next uh, I know Glenn wanted to share a few words about how he got into tech is Glenn it's on the line how about this next then how about Mike hello I think Maria? Oh, can you hear me Glenn I can hear you now. oh Glenn is now on the line okay so we'll have Glenn and then Mike sorry it took me a second uh, multitasking like everybody uh, uh, hi everybody I'm Glenn Allen uh so let's see so I've been involved in technology most of my life uh the the turning point or the like the aha moment for me happened when I was in elementary school and I grew up in the Hudson Valley uh, like Poughkeepsie Kingston area and um, back when I was growing up IBM was king 
you know, IBM was like, everybody worked for IBM. Uh, you know, they had the great jobs. And when, you know, when my dad, who was a butcher at ShopRite, when they had a picnic, you know, we went to a park and played softball. But when the IBMers had a picnic, they rented out the Dutchess County Fairgrounds and it was like rides and everything. So, wow, it was like IBM. Anyway, so one time in uh, elementary school, went on a field trip to IBM to one of the plants. And it was just very impressive. I mean, just, you know, huge. First of all, the facility was huge. They had huge machines, huge computers. Uh, I remember uh, discs the size of like semi truck tires, you know, gigantic tires. Um, also, the people were very inspirational. The, the, the person leading the tour uh, was a man who got started in the mailroom when he graduated from high school. And he worked his way up to be a man manager and he was wearing a three piece suit and everything else. Very, very impressive. And so from that point on, I decided this technology, this is where it's at. I, ha I have to focus my career on technology. So and that's what I did just, you know, through uh, high school, college and graduate school. I got degrees in computer science and that that made things simple because a lot of my classmates didn't know what they wanted to do. You know, they were undeclared majors. They had no idea what to do. And I'm just technology all the way. Uh, you know, computer science and math. And it's, it's been good. It's, it's been a, a really good move because uh, by and large, it, there has been a lot of opportunity in this field. And uh, yeah, so I got a job in Syracuse. I, I got my undergraduate at SUNY Poly in Utica. And I bounced around a couple different jobs in Syracuse working on weird stuff. There's so many different languages. I did. I spent three years working on Pro 4. Anyone ever heard of Pro 4? No, of course not. <laughs> There's so many obscure languages. And um, then, then I, I started working for a company called PPC, and they were implementing SAP software, uh, which SAP is a very, very large software company, third largest software company in the world behind Microsoft and Oracle. And uh, this local company was implementing SAP. And so I got a job with them and I got trained and I worked with them for five years, uh, learning a lot about SAP, which SAP in itself, it's, it's its own little architecture, its own little ecosystem and lots of complexity. And uh, then I started freelancing and you know, I got kind of sick and tired of uh, being a full-time employee. And the freelancing has been great. I've been doing that for 10 plus years and you know, I get to travel and make some good money. You know, there's pros and cons. I, I can actually, I do have a whole talk I could do on freelancing. Uh, but yeah, by and large, uh, technology has been very good to me. And uh, that's why I try to, you know, I try to mentor, I try to help people, anyone who wants to get to this field. Uh, we need people, uh, we need you. Uh, so yeah, stay focused on technology. Thank you, Jennifer. Awesome. Thank you so much, Glenn. I know that Glenn is always uh, a big, uh, he's always participating in lots of meetups. So if you guys end up going to more meetups in Syracuse, he's always there. And plus he has plugged his LinkedIn uh, in the networking channel in Discord. So feel free to connect him on there. And I know that uh, Glenn is uh, very, uh, very interested in SAP. So if you have any questions with him, uh, please uh, ping him. Yes, thank you, Glenn. Do you have anything? I was just going to say thank you, Glenn. I just wanted to echo your sentiments, Jen. Thank you so much. And then next up, Mike. Mike did a presentation yesterday on Salesforce. Uh, so I do want to just hear to how, uh, on Salesforce how he got into Salesforce, but I would just love to, for him to reiterate uh, what he said in his presentation or any other additional details as well. Sure, thanks. Uh, yeah, so, and, and this might get a little generational. Um, you know, and so I'm going to be speaking from like a Gen X perspective on this. And, and I'm really curious about your history, Jen. Um, when I was growing up in the 80s, this is how I got in tech. This stuff here. And if, if you don't know what these things are, this is an Atari 2600. And this is a Nintendo cartridge. Um, and, and this was really all we had at the time. Uh, I didn't, get a, I didn't get, a, get a computer in my house until I was in high school. Uh, and so... In the 80s, pretty much you're limited to video games and occasionally going to the public library to use their computer systems and play Snoopy or Family Feud or something like that, um, you know, down the public library because that's all you had. You didn't have a machine. Uh, and nowadays, you know, people come into tech and like 
my telephone has a compiler on it. You know, you could actually write programs on your phones now, you know, and, and you know, I didn't write my first actual computer program until college, you know, and it was just, that's the way it was growing up. You know, that's how it how it happened. Um, but, you know, getting into that phase, I really greatly enjoyed uh, being able to figure out how to get stuff out of my system without, uh, without having the resources really available for it, how to public, you know, create like the school newspaper on a machine that had hardly any RAM, <laughs> uh, trying to burn CDs on a machine that had eight megabytes of RAM, not gigs, megs, you know, it's like nothing. <laughs> uh, and, and really the, the ability to uh, basically manipulate a tool to be able to build stuff and make it do what I want I thought was a, a very uh, attractive proposition for me. Um, it, it's, I'm sure people who get into like woodworking or, or metallography, you know, the, how they have a similar enjoyment of creating and crafting things. That's what I felt um, when manipulating bits and bytes. Um, in terms of Salesforce, I basically fell into that accidentally. You know, I just, I got a QA job and the job they said, we, we need you to test the Salesforce system. And that's kind of how I got into Salesforce, completely by accident. <laughs> um, but the very nice thing about tech, uh, especially tech nowadays, is stuff changes so fast and so often that you are constantly doing something new and you're constantly having to learn something new. So every time that I've started to feel burned out in the past 20 years of, of being an IT professional, the entire ecosystem changed and I have to learn something new. And so I'm basically restarting over every five years or so, just restarting and, and it's, it's like reinventing a career constantly. If you want to survive in tech, you have to be Madonna. You have to constantly adapt and constantly try to surprise everyone and yourself. <laughs> cool, awesome. Well, I think that even, uh, it seems that even if you are from Gen, Gen X, uh, I think that uh, people would, I, if, even if you are not from Gen X, I think people really find it really interesting how you got into, how you got into tech and how you got into Salesforce. Because I think it's, I think it's, we we really emphasize like software development a lot in our meetups. Like it was actually web development, but we really don't talk about the other like aspects of tech as much. So it's really great to kind of hear that from you. I just want to add, um, our chat is on. So if anybody wants to do any side chatting or have any questions along the way, feel free to go ahead and type something in. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, if you guys have any questions for Glenn, for Mike, or for Dana about her rap career, please <laughs> put it in the chat. <laughs> uh, did, did everyone get the link? I think I put, the, yeah, I put the link up for everyone. So can we, can we play that awesome. like on YouTube Live? Would we get demonetized? <laughs> It, the, the, the rap group is no longer in existence. The company behind us is no longer in existence. I don't think anyone's going to complain. You have my permission. I can't stop you. <laughs> I mean, can we? I, it, it, I mean, is if you, this is if gonna you be... want to. I don't know if I actually can do it on my computer. Actually, you're be spared because I can't do it on my computer because I have like a different um, oh, Zoom. You, you can probably do it. You can play. Uh, it. <laughs> you want like right now? Right now? Oh, uh, okay. you don't have to. I guess I, like, I, I can. can. So, oh, so Ryan said, Ryan just put his thumbs up. By the way, he did. Okay, I will. I will play some of it. Okay, I'll play okay. some of it, like the first part. I'll, um. So I'll go ahead and do a share screen and yes. then I'll have to go to um, YouTube. Okay, one moment, folks. Yeah, you do share screen and at the end there, there should be share computer sound. Okay, then. All right. Let me see now. Let me go to this and we'll go to share screen. Here we go. Mm -hmm. that I will have Marianne talk about her experience. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, then and then I'm going to hit play. And then you said I have to share sound. 
Uh, I think it's muted on the YouTube video right oh, now. Okay. So turn oh, it. Let me go ahead and turn it on. So we can hear and see can, if we can hear. Can it. you hear it now? No, we cannot hear it. Okay, hold on. Yeah, so stop sharing your screen. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Posh. Okay. Let's we'll completely turn this off. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go back to it. <laughs> Awesome. While you're figuring that <laughs> out, while you're figuring out that data, Mas I would just love yeah. to give uh, Marianne um, a chance uh, to speak as well. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Marianne. You can unmute yourself, I believe. Hello. Hold on. Let me get back to my screen. Yeah, let's give Marianne a chance uh, to speak. Hey, Marianne. We had this session about working remotely, and I had been thinking about going back to working remotely, but I'm also thinking about how much things have changed a lot. <laughs> so this was like 1995, maybe, or 94, 96. Um, I, my marriage was falling apart, and I, I was going to go back to live back home. I had been doing contracting work already mostly from home. Um, and I said, I have to quit because everything's a disaster and I'm going to go live on Long Island. But the company was kind of progressive. Um, and and they were just like, well, just work from there. And you, you almost never heard of that back then. So I was like, all right, if you're sure. <laughs> so in my old like in my 1988 Honda Accord, I drive down to Long Island with all our stuff packed, my kid in the car seat. Um, I take that back. I'm not sure. I don't think we had to have car seats. So my five-year-old is sitting in the seat next to me <laughs> back then. And we didn't have laptops. I had unplugged my whole um, desktop, all the had to unplug everything, put it in the box with the original styrofoam that because I always keep the boxes for everything and had it in the back seat. <laughs> and I get home and assemble it in my parents. And my, my mother couldn't believe it. Every time I needed to talk to our client was in Chicago and I was creating reports for them. I would call them on the phone. I would have to use my mother's phone to call Chicago. That was a big deal. She couldn't believe it. And <laughs> I was making these reports. They're just, they were just uh, columns, nothing. Back then, everything was text-based, no graphics. And um, anytime he needed to show me what something would look like, he would send me a fax and I would have to go to the store, something like a UPS store. To, it was this local mom and pop shop to receive my faxes there. I couldn't even do it on my own computer. <laughs> so there's this huge... Um, like Mike was saying, it really keeps you on your toes. <laughs> and Marianne, this weekend is my first um, time using Slack. I'm always doing something new. Yeah, Marianne, can you just remind us, like, what do you do professionally? I know that you had mentioned you're a software developer. Your daughter is also was a hacker and a software developer as well. Yes, I've been a software developer since I graduated school in 1986. Um, I currently work for a defense company here in the Capital District region near Albany, a, a very large one. Oh, we work on, uh, we develop nuclear powered submarines. So I, now I'm doing embedded work. Yeah. Um, before that, I was in the IT department uh, doing enhancements for SharePoint. They have Microsoft SharePoint there. Um, before that, I did web design for several years. Um, I, I did a lot of different things. Yeah, like Mike says, it's kind of a kind of fun to try to keep up with everything. <laughs> well, that's crazy that you've yeah. been a software developer for so long and you're still continuously learning. I think this role is really for people who really love to learn. That's what I 
really see is like this is really you're, you're always going to be learning and there's not enough to learn and Marianne, I would love if you do have like a LinkedIn or anything, I'd love you for you to share it in the chat or in our networking channel in Discord. I don't have LinkedIn yet. <laughs> you should, you should create one. See, you're learning something new, like creating a LinkedIn well, or something. Yeah, that's on my list of things to do. Part of, one of the drawbacks about um, working in this, um, where I work now is you can't really share. Like when I was working on websites, everything was out there and I could share what I do and my work. And now I'm in kind of a high security facility and I can't even bring my phone into the place. Um, in fact, I didn't even own a smartphone. I didn't bother until recently because <laughs> you couldn't use it. So it wasn't a point. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I know. A couple the last of couple of years, well, my youngest kid went to college. I've been working on stepping out a little bit of hackathons and meetups and stuff. Yeah, I have some friends who work in defense and they have, they say about the same story. Can you say the name of your company though? Um, if you look it up, it's the Naval Nuclear Laboratory. Oh, cool. I've heard of them. Awesome. Cool. Well, I guess I can computer go. computer didn't even have, the one that I took to Long Island, it didn't even have windows on it. It was all in DOS. It had windows where I could start it up from a DOS command prompt, but then there was nothing really to do in it because nobody had anything out there. I don't know what a DOS command is. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> um, but before Windows, everything was text-based. So when the internet first came out, it was just a prompt, uh, sort of like when you open terminal. It's just a text. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Um, cool. Um, so DOS, yes, I completely understand that world. And if that dates me, then oh well. I think I have a few people in my corner out here who who understand that. Just look it up, Jen. <laughs> okay, I, I will look it up uh, at some point as I feel like I've heard of it, but I just, yeah, I, I guess I have, I just never looked into it. I know a couple of judges are- entire operating system on a little tiny disk that would hold nothing these days. And anybody who used it had all the commands memorized in their head because it was so small. I feel like we need to come together at, at another point and talk about how our careers in technology have truly dated us. I wanted to scream the other day when my daughter told me that I was old because I left a voice message instead of a text message. And I said, well, why don't you listen to your voice message, your voice messages? And she said, because mom, why would I listen to a voice message when you can just text me? And I just wanted to scream and do something really bad to her, but I'll stop that. I just say that I believe that that subject deserves attention because I'm gonna do something really bad to all three of my girls if they tell me I'm old again, and that's all. That's really funny because my parents uh, are from Vietnam and so their systems are way less advanced than ours. And so my parents like don't even know remotely, like what, they don't even have a data system. They just don't even know the world about a computer. So it's like fascinating. If there's anyone, do we have anyone else who, who is supposed to speak uh, next, Jen? If not, maybe we can um, open up a discussion. If folks raise their hand, we can just unmute one by one and let people kind of share their thoughts. Yeah, I haven't shared mine if you guys want to hear about my story. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Cool. I know some judges are coming back in, Dana, so if you can just keep an eye on that, that'd be great. <laughs> Yes, I've been letting people in. Cool, awesome. So I am Jennifer. Uh, you guys might know me as a person who is always like pinging the events channel and Syracuse.io, always like hosting many different events. I always was really inclined with technology. I started learning like HTML and CSS like back in high school. I did some JavaScript back in high school and I wanted to become, I wanted to major in computer science. But the reason why I didn't major in computer science in college was my professor told me that if I didn't get an A in introduction to computer science, 
introduction to CS, I shouldn't major in it. And I got a B, I think I got a B in that class. So I decided not to major because there's just kind of this old idea that you had to be like a genius um, in CS in order to major in it. And also in my class, in my CS class, I couldn't look anything up. I had to actually handwrite all my code, which is not really indicative of how people code, right? I, you People look at documentation, but in that class, I couldn't look at any documentation. So, so I felt like my grade like wasn't that good because it really didn't reflect modern day coding. And so I didn't major in computer science and decided to major in urban studies instead because I was so very interested in transportation. I, I kind of always thought that I was just end up doing that instead because I was told from very early age that I can't do tech because I'm not the best at it. And, but I still, when I was in, when I majored in urban studies, I still like did geographical information systems and took a lot of math classes because I was so technically inclined. It was just, there's kind of this outdated thought that you had to know everything. I had to have memorized a lot of CS, uh, like a lot of code already in order to major, in order to do computer science. So I worked in logistics for two years. And as some of you know, like that is like my, one of my greatest passions working in supply chain and logistics. And I was, when I was there, I just dealt with so many issues. And Jen, uh, I, I don't want to interrupt yeah. you. Uh, it's about 2.30 and we okay. just got no pinged problem. that uh, we're ready to start prizes. Okay, cool. Well, I will share with you guys my story at another time, hopefully at another Hack of State or in the channel. And so uh, thank you so much uh, for letting us, let, letting a couple people in the tech community share their story. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Jennifer and Dana and everyone else for sharing their story today. Uh, we are back from deliberating and we have some prizes for you all. Um, so everyone can see my screen, right? Jennifer and Dana, if you can give me a thumbs up. Everyone can see this, right? Okay, perfect. Uh, and do we still have the stream running, uh, Jennifer, Dana, or anyone who's on the YouTube live? We can just check that real quick. I think we're still all good. I just wanna yes. make sure. Perfect. We all right, guys, thank you for your patience while we are deliberating. It was really hard because this is the most amount of projects we have ever had at a Hack Up State. Uh, and I think that's pretty amazing for our first virtual event. So let's give a huge Zoom round of applause to everyone who presented today uh, because that's amazing. We had so many cool projects uh, and it was really hard to decide on the winner. So uh, thank you guys for your patience. Um, all right, so we'll get right into it. Um, again, uh, please use your Zoom reactions all throughout the call here uh, to show your support for all of our prize winners. Um, first and foremost, we're gonna start with uh, just a couple of the ones we mentioned on Saturday. So for the virtual Zoom background, uh, goes to Edward Deaver, $25 Amazon gift card. Congratulations, Edward, on your virtual Zoom background. Uh, Max, trust me, you are a close runner up, uh, but $25 gift con card, uh, congratulations, Edward. Let's give a nice round of applause to, to Edward here. Um, next up, we have our CNY uh, trivia winner, and that is going to be Melissa. Um, congratulations, Melissa, $25 Amazon gift card for you. Um, let's give a nice round of applause to uh, Melissa and Zoom chat. Um, next up for the gift, gift card matching program, we have two winners. Uh, we have Ignacio for Ultra Cinco for 60 bucks and Chris Berry, uh, $40 for Salt City Coffee. So we'll follow up with you guys uh, after this to get you your gift card. So let's give it up to Ignacio and Chris Berry uh, as part of our gift card matching program. Um, all right, next up for the uh, Living in Central New York uh, video or text submission uh, goes to Alexander Jansing. Congratulations for $100. We had uh, five or six submissions for this. So thank you to everyone who submitted. Um, but Alex did, uh, did win it here. So congratulations, Alex, $100 Amazon gift card. Um, to the individual that provided us feedback during the closing ceremony, congrats to Wyatt Matt, um, $25 Amazon gift card. Let's give it up for, for Wyatt. Um, and next up here for our CNY Social Impact Prize, uh, we have Fund It for $100. Let's give it up for Fund It. Let's show all those reactions in the Zoom chat. Congrats, Fund It. Uh, next up are uh, for the best hardware hack provided by Density, uh, we have Dirt for $100. So congrats to Dirt uh, for uh, 100 bucks. Next up, we have our best effort hack provided by Tompkins Trust Company. That'll be for a hundred dollars, and that goes to Easy Park. Congrats, Easy Park! Let's give it up for Easy Park in the in the Zoom chat. 
Next up, we have best use of open data provided by the Syracuse iSchool. And that goes to Parent Portal for 100 bucks. So congrats, Parent Portal, uh, on the $100. Next up, we have our best central in upstate New York, our great place to work from home hack. That's kind of a mouthful. But that is uh, proudly provided by our presenting sponsor of Hack Upstate 15, uh, the Tech Garden, for our first virtual event. And that goes to New York State Attractions. So congratulations, New York State Attractions, for $100. Uh, all right, next up, before we get into the first runner up and the grand prize, we had to give an honorable mention uh, to Max for his 1099 generator for 50 bucks. Uh, the judges all thought it was really cool, so we decided last minute to give a nice honorable mention. Um, for the first runner up for $500, we have Is the Mail Here Yet? Congratulations, Edward. 500 bucks, man. Uh, Let's give a nice, huge round of applause to Edward for Is the Mail Here Yet for 500 bucks. And next up for our grand prize, for the total amount of $1,000 cash, we have DIRTS, Direct Interactive Real Tabletop. So $1,000, congratulations to Steve. Uh, awesome work. Uh, the judges all loved all the projects uh, and it was really, really tough to decide. Um, so huge, huge, huge congratulations to all the winners. Um, and also thank you so much to everyone for coming out today. We, we really appreciate you all taking the time and hacking with us over the past 24 hours again. Um, winners, just a quick heads up, please, please, please stay on the Zoom call to claim your prize. Uh, we need you to fill out a, a form and if you're here, just get it over and done with and we'll get you, uh, get you paid. Um, if you're the winner of an Amazon gift card, you don't need to fill out the form, you, you can drop off and, and we'll just uh, use the email you signed up with. Um, so no worries uh, for the Amazon gift card winners. Um, I'm going to end the YouTube live stream now, and we'd love to get a picture with all the winners as well. So if you're here, please stay on. Um, for folks that are on the call today, if they happen to be in different times or whatever, we will just be sending out via email. But again, if you're on the call today to claim your prize, please stay on the call for a little while. We might get a picture with all the, the winners as well. So um Again, thank you all so much for coming to our first virtual hackathon and uh, I think making it an amazing success. Uh, we seriously appreciate everyone spending your, your weekend with us. We learned so much and, and we're so incredibly fortunate to have such an amazing understanding tech community um, and allowing us to put on this uh, virtual event. Um, and also huge, huge, huge thank you to Dana and Jennifer who really brought this virtual event together. Um, and it's certain, it, it simply wouldn't have been possible without them. So. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Dan and Jennifer. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the live stream on YouTube now. If you if you aren't a prize winner, you can feel free to drop from the call. If you are a prize winner, please stay on and uh, fill out the form to submit your prize. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone now. Um, and yeah, Zoom winners, or please stay on the call. And uh, thank you again, everyone. If you uh, aren't a winner, you can drop off and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, everyone, again. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the live stream. Once Ooh, I love Central New York tech community. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Nice. Um, okay, uh, give me two seconds, guys. I'm just ending the live stream. If you're a winner, we appreciate your patience while we end the stream. Um, uh, someone named Rashab is trying to get in to see a winner. If not, uh, does it even make sense to let him in at this point? Yeah, in, I'm not sure. Um, oh, Dana, he's a hacker. Oh, he's a hacker. Okay. Dana and Jennifer, if you guys can go ahead and uh, allow everyone to unmute. 